Hey everybody, welcome to Physical Friday today. This episode is brought to you by Waypoint as always. Waypoint is the pl best place in the world that you can go and watch your favorite hunting and fishing content for free. You can get it on Samsung Plus, Zumo, Pluto, uh, Tubi, Stir, all of these different platforms on the Plus channels, or you can go right to the website, look up ways to watch, and you can find out how to get it on your phone, on your laptop, on your computer, anywhere you want, anytime you want, absolutely free for you. There's a whole bunch of stuff over there that you can check out, including the Waypoint Outdoor Collective, which if you like this podcast, you're going to like many of the others on the Waypoint Outdoor Collective. So that's a great resource for you. That's Waypoint TV. We're also brought to you by Manscaped. You can go to manscaped.com and you can get 20% off and free shipping if you use the code TRP. You can check out some of the packages that they have, which include the new Lawn Mower 3.0 for all of your trimming. I don't know about you guys, but right now during the quarantine, I have become a barber. Uh, I'm cutting my kid's hair. I'm cutting everybody's hair. My son just shaved his beard off. Man, this Manscaped trimmer is designed for below the belt, but it works great. You know, sideburns, uh, for my son's beard that he just shaved off, getting around the neckline. It doesn't cut you. It's absolutely amazing. The thing is legit. Go check it out. Manscaped.com. 20% off by using the code TRP. You can also go to hookgear.com and get 30% off the entire site. Anything you want on the site. I'd get some rain gear if I were you. That is the most expensive stuff, and their rain gear is the best. It's awesome, but you can get all kinds of stuff over there, anything from you know T-shirts like what I'm wearing right now to rain gear, whatever you want. They got you covered head to toe for all of your fishing needs. That's hookgear.com. Use the code SE30, and you will get 30% off of all of your order. You can also visit our other sponsor, of the podcast, Barracuda Tackle. Barracuda makes the best cast nets there are. Um, we had Burton on the show recently. He told us all about how they're made and his innovation. Uh, but what's really cool about uh, Barracuda right now, if you ask me, is that they are really helping the guide community. The, this period of time where the coronavirus shut down has been very, very difficult for a lot of fishing guides. This is the time of the year where you make hay. You got to make hay when the sun shines. And for a lot of people, it is impossible to do that because their marina's closed, they're, they cannot operate. Maybe the boat ramps are closed, their customers can't get to them. A few fishing guides are, are able to fish, but a lot aren't. So Barracuda is doing a guide relief program where they're um, raising some money and donating it back to the captains that need it the most. So that's really cool to help the guide community. So I always like to support companies that support us. And that's us, guides, fishermen, people that like to be outside. So Barracuda Tackle, you can go visit them too. All right, so today on Physical Friday, we're going to answer a question that came to me recently. And that is um, this. Good morning, Tom. I live in Southwest Florida, and recently I've been trying to work on my push polling. I've dedicated myself to it a handful of trips this year, and each time my arms, shoulders in particular, are exhausted by mid-afternoon. I'm sure my technique isn't perfect, but could you do a Physical Friday podcast on some exercises specifically to help in fatigue in polling? So, of course, absolutely. This is a great idea. I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but... Um, polling is a very physical activity. It's a lot like climbing a rope. It's a lot like uh, rowing a boat. It's really a lot like throwing a cast net. Burton was telling us the other day that, you know, you, if you try to muscle the cast net out, it's not going to open very well. But if you get the weight swinging and then you let it go and you have it loaded properly, the thing just pops open like it's supposed to. Polling a boat is very similar to that. You can pull a boat just with nothing but muscle, and that's not so good. Or you can use good technique and use good equipment to help you out. But still, no matter what kind of equipment you have, no matter what boat you're in, it's still a physical activity. And when you're pulling into the wind all day long, it's blowing 20, 
it's very physical and it's no uh, wonder that people get tired. Guides get tired. Everybody gets tired. It's hard to do. So then you combine that with having two big, heavy customers, you're pulling into the wind all day. That's tough. Another thing that happens with polling, especially for veteran guides, career guides, is that polling is a repetitive motion. You are doing the same thing. If you're right-handed, you're going to be putting your left hand up at the top and you're going to be pushing. So the pole is going to be coming on your right side most of the time. Of course, you're going to pull on the other side if the wind's blowing the other way, but primarily you're, you're going to have a, a side that you prefer polling on. That repetitive motion, years and years and years of that repetitive motion has given many, many guides shoulder issues. So we're going to talk today about some ways that I was able to minimize those shoulder injuries and maintain my shoulder health and actually regain my shoulder health because there was a time when orthopedic surgeons were telling me that I was to operate in a box like this. I wasn't going to be able to put my hands over my head like this. I wasn't really, it wasn't going to be a good idea to work down below that uh, and or on the outside. So everything that I did, if I put something on a shelf, I was going to need to put it in this box right here, like imaginary box. If I'm going to drive, I hold my, hold my steering wheel like this, everything. I didn't think that that was going to work for me. So I started working on some other things and I was able to rehab my shoulders extremely well. I have no problems with my shoulders and uh, we'll go over that today as well. So first, let's talk about equipment, right? Polling a boat is, it is important that you have the right equipment. And when you're standing on the back of the boat, um, you need a pole that is the right length. You need a pole that's made out of the right material, and it needs to be the right flexibility. A push pole is not um, a stiff pole that does not bend. A push pole bends a lot like a pole vault pole. And in fact, it's very similar to pole vaulting uh, with less drama. You're not flying over a bar or anything like that. But what you are doing is you're loading that pole, just like you're loading a fishing rod, and then you're allowing the pole to bend back and propel you forward. So what you're looking for in a push pole is you're looking for one that fits your boat. So the bigger, heavier boat you have, the stiffer that pole needs to be, right? Because if you have a very, very heavy boat and you have a real wimpy push pole, you're just going to push on it. It's going to bend a lot, but it's not going to have the power to help you propel it forward. Now, it's not like you're just loading the pole and letting it just shoot you forward. There is, you're still pushing, but there, you're getting aid from the pole. It's bending, it's shooting you forward, and you're, you're walking up that pole. Then you're throwing the pole up, you're coming back down pushing again. And on the last one, you're pushing real hard. You're getting that propel propulsion forward when the, when the pole bends, unloads, and pushes you forward a little bit. You're getting a tremendous aid there. And the guys that really know how to do it um, are, are using their equipment. They're using the pole. They're using what's happening, the load and unload to propel them forward. So that's one reason why maybe you're getting really tired and some other people can pole all day is because the technique of polling is, uh, is much better for, for a veteran guide, obviously. So you want to make sure you have the right equipment. You want the pole to match the boat. So if you're in a very, very light boat, you can get away with a, with a pole with a lot of flexibility. You want your pole to be... Um, I would say 18 feet at the minimum. Uh, 21 feet is a good mid-range for most flats guides, and a 24-foot pole is where a lot of people will go for um, tarpon season. Get over 24 feet, it starts to get a little wonky when you're when you're riding in the boat. So I don't really suggest that. Like a 24-foot pole is. That's that's a long one. 21 is what is that's that's pretty much the standard. 18 at the minimum because once you get uh elevation standing on the polling tower if your pole is much shorter than 18 feet, you're not really able to hit the bottom in you know from from that elevation now you're chewing up a lot of that length and you're trying to reach the bottom 
If you end up uh, tarpon season, you're pulling in a little deeper water, you're trying to hit the, you're trying to cross a channel or something like that, you're going to quickly run out of length. So that's where some people will push and move to a 24 foot pole if they're doing that a lot just for tarpon season and then back off and go back to a 21 uh, for the rest of the year. But, you know, that's, that's kind of where we are on equipment. I prefer a, a carbon pole um, or even a hybrid. And I stay away from fiberglass poles. Maybe the technology in fiberglass poles has gotten a lot better, but typically in the early days, a fiberglass pole or even a hybrid would shed. So after a day of polling, you felt like you'd been installing insulation all day. It was itchy. It was terrible. I did not like that one bit. So I went to an all carbon pole and uh, Stiffy is the brand that I always use the most. It was the best best one on the market. It still is. And uh, that's, that's what I recommend. Uh, but you still have to find the right one for your boat. If it's too stiff, you're not getting the bend. If it's too wimpy, you're, you're not, it's not able to recover. So it's a lot like a fishing rod. Uh, the manufacturers can help you with that. You call them up. You're like, I got a 17 yellow fun skiff, and this is the kind of fishing that I'm doing. Um, either the boat manufacturer or the push pole manufacturer can help you with that. All right, so let's talk about um, some exercises that you can do for uh, polling, particularly that is going to help you greatly. <clears throat> so the number one thing you can do is poll a lot, right? You get out there, you poll a lot, you're going to get better at it, you're going to get stronger, and your hands are going to get stronger, your, your forearms are going to get stronger. But if you're not able to do that all the time, or even for veteran guides, there are a lot of accessory exercises that you can do that will help you not only to be better at polling, but to reduce injury and to reduce long-term injury from repetitive overuse injuries, like just up and down, up and down. You're, you're polling like this all the time. If that's the only motion that you're putting your shoulder in, you're taking a big risk of overuse injuries. So I'm not an expert on overuse injuries, but I know that I have had them in both my shoulders and I have been able to rehab both those shoulders. Um, so I'll tell you what I did. Um, polling, in my opinion, uh, the, the muscles that it taxes the most are the small muscles in your hands. So if, you, if you're looking at your, your hands, you've got muscles all throughout your hands. You've also got calluses that are going to develop across here. I mean, right, look at those those nasty looking calluses right there. Um, and I even um, will file these down so that they don't rip. But you're you you've got to have a good grip. You've got to be able to really grip that push pole and hold on to it. Oftentimes it is wet. Oftentimes it is slippery. If you get um, sunscreen on your hands or even just like whatever uh it, it can get very very slippery so the push pole generally has ridges in it which offers a good grip some people wear gloves that's fine whatever you want to do uh is fine but but the grip being able to hold that pole and being able to pull down is a lot like hanging on a rope or climbing a rope right uh you have to have a strong forearm you have to have strong hands so in my opinion some of the things that you can do, I know your question was about shoulders, but some of the things that you're going to need to do if you're going to pull a lot is to condition the hands, condition the grip, condition the forearms. Because when you start pulling a lot, like once you get over the shoulder fatigue, the next thing that's going to fatigue is your hands. And I, I can make sure that you get over the shoulder fatigue. That's going to be a lot of technique and it's going to be a few exercises that you're going to, you're going to all of a sudden be able to uh, pull a lot longer without having problems with your shoulders, but you're still going to, you're, you're going to encounter problems with your hands pretty quick. So hand strength is of utmost importance. Um, some of the things that, that I like to do for my, um, for my grip, one of the things that you can do is to get a, a bucket of rice like this guy's got on YouTube. I don't know who this is, or anything about this video, but I just Googled uh, rice and grip. And what he's doing is he's getting in there and he's using a bucket full of rice 
and he's squeezing and kind of kneading that rice around. That's going to be very helpful with your grip. That's going to help your forearms and your hand strength. That's a very, very, very good exercise. As you watch him, he's going back one way. He's going the other way. If you're listening to this to audio, there is a video available on YouTube and on Waypoint that you can watch this video. But what we're watching is just a guy that has a five-gallon bucket full of rice, and he's just doing many different kneading kind of exercises within that rice, using the rice as resistance um, to... Uh, strengthen his hands and and forearms and that's exactly what's going on there so that's a good way to strengthen the hands a good way to strengthen the the grip is to do other things like uh farmers carries that's this is something that i like to do a lot the farmers carry is um is very simple all you're going to do is you're going to uh, pick up something heavy and you're going to carry it for as long as you can. So this could be two five-gallon buckets. This could be uh, kettlebells. It could be dumbbells. It could be anything. It could be a couple of cast nets. It could be anything that's heavy, and that's a fisherman's life. You're carrying stuff all the time. So if we look at what this guy's doing, it's very simple. You pick up these dumbbells. You walk with them. The heavier they are, the better. This is going to help with your with your shoulder strength, it's going to help all the way down to your fingertips. You're holding those dumbbells. You're creating strength in your hands. You're creating strength in your forearms. And you're also being able to hold a load through your shoulders. So you're, you're standing in a position like this. It's not uncommon to be doing this as a fisherman. So that is one that uh, is very, very important. The farmer's carry is one I like. Now let's talk specifically about shoulders because the thing about the shoulders is that that was first the the question that you had obviously um but it's also super important so with the shoulders probably the best exercise that you could possibly do is pull-ups right because when you're pulling the boat you are pulling down now you're pulling down with one hand up and one hand a little bit lower, but the pull up or the chin up, but specifically the pull up, I like hands out and grip like this. The pull up is going to condition your shoulders, the front side of your shoulders and the back side of your shoulders better than anything else. Now we can get more specific about the pull ups. And instead of just using a bar, we can use other implements to make this a better exercise for polling specifically. And you don't have to have a lot of fancy equipment. You don't have to go to a gym. You can absolutely do it at your house, in your backyard. It's the, this is probably the easiest thing. If you've got a tree, you can throw a rope over the tree and do rope or towel, towel pull-ups. Now, the purpose for this is we were talking about how important it is to strengthen your hands, strengthen your forearms. So as we start thinking about using different implements to do different types of pull-ups, you want to try to do something that's going to kind of simulate what you're doing. You're grabbing a round object and you're pulling down like this. And so the towel pull-up is one where you need almost no equipment. It's literally a towel, a beach towel, a bath towel, an old towel. Don't get in trouble with your wife. Make sure you're using an old crappy one. But you loop this over the bar. You can do one towel pull-ups. You can do two towel pull-ups. We'll watch my friend Ross here, uh, Ross Enomite. He was on the podcast recently. He's going to do some, some rope and towel pull-ups. Now this one, he's got one towel looped over the bar, and he's doing pull-ups. This one, he has two separate towels pulled over the bar. Now he's using a half an inch rope. Then he's going to try another size rope. This is a one inch rope, which is going to be very similar to the push pole size. And he's going to move to a one and a half inch rope and probably then to a two inch rope as well. So what that does is it just trains the grip a little bit differently. If you're, if you're using uh, different size ropes, if you're using different uh, widths of towels. If you're using one towel versus two towels, it's going to be training your grip differently, but you're building this strength of 
pulling down and you're building the strength throughout your hands and forearms as well. So rope and towel pull-ups, man, that is amazing. Those are great. You can also climb a rope. If you have a rope, a 20-foot rope, a 15-foot rope, a 10-foot rope, whatever you've got, if you have a rope, all we're talking about is a is a one and a half inch manila rope. They use it to tie ships up. You can probably get it down at the docks or you can order it from someplace like Rogue Fitness. Um, that is really, really important um, to continue building that strength. So I'm going to look up this other thing that I forgot to get queued up here. Um, but there's also building strength for polling. But then there's the other thing that you need to be thinking about all the time, and we all need to be thinking about, especially the veteran guides, is how to maintain, how to maintain your shoulder health. Okay. So one of the things that happens as you are uh, doing anything repetitive, if you're going like this and then you start training like this, all you're doing is more of the same motion. So what's really important or what I think is important for shoulder health is to do many different types of motion so that you're, you're, you're not just strengthening the, the little muscles that are pulling in the way that you're going to be pulling, but you're strengthening the entire shoulder, front and back, and you're, you're strengthening it all the way down to the hands so that you are utilizing that like you're pulling. One of the things to do is not just to pull to to work on pulling strength like pull ups and towel pull ups and rope pull ups, but then to also work on pushing strength. Right, so you're training muscles in the opposite way. You are pulling down to to pull a boat. It's also very important to push up. So you can push up with a shoulder press. A seated shoulder press is a good one. You can do it with dumbbells or you can do it with a straight bar, kettlebells, whatever you got. You can, you can do anything heavy. Push it overhead, right? Push that overhead and you're training the shoulder in a different way. Now, one of the things that I have come across in the last few years that is super important as far as strength, but more importantly for the health of the shoulder is this product that I'm showing you right now, and it's called Crossover Symmetry. Now, Crossover Symmetry is definitely not a sponsor of this podcast. I wish they were. I have bought their product, and I love their product. Um, it is something that people use in um, baseball a lot, and all it is are these, these, uh, these rubber bands and you cross them and they give you a series of shoulder exercises that you're doing that are going to strengthen the entire shoulder. People have had remarkable results with these crossover symmetry uh, bands and the, the protocol that they use. I strongly recommend it. If you're already having shoulder problems, get this crossover symmetry, you do their program religiously day in and day out, start with the lightest bands and then work your way up through that, through to the heavier bands and you can make incredible progress on your shoulder. Another thing that you can do is simply to hang, hang from a bar for as long as you possibly can. If you can get two minutes, that's excellent. Hanging from a bar is also same deal. Going to, going to strengthen the, the hands, the forearms, but you're also doing some different stuff inside of the shoulder, which really, really helped me to rehab my shoulder. So instead of working in this box, like they told me I was going to, I have full range of motion in my shoulders, pain-free, no problem. Okay, so the crossover symmetry is definitely something that you want to uh, add to your daily routine. I wish I had a video of how it works, but they're basically, it's very simple. It's a bunch of different uh, exercises. Another thing that you can do is a, uh, a prone snow angel. Some people call it a reverse so snow angel. Some people call it a swimmer. Um, but this is one where you just lay on your lay prone down face down and we'll watch this video right here. She's got a couple of little two and a half pound weights in her hands and she is going to basically be doing a butterfly stroke 
on the ground with face down, just bringing her hands down to her hips and back up to her shoulders. This is an excellent exercise that you can do uh, off the water, dry land training. You don't need weights. You can just do a lot of these and it is going to be very, very good for your shoulder. Um, so those things, man, are very, very important as far as holding goes. <laughs> like I said, you know, these are, these are accessory exercises. The best way that you're going to learn how to pull better and, and probably get better at it is to do it a lot. So get out there, pull a lot, but when you can't pull, or if you're having trouble with your shoulders, think about doing a lot of these accessory m movements that we just talked about here. The most important, probably the pull up, the rope pull up, the towel pull up, the shoulder press, and then think about training your forearms and hands. Farmers carries, farmers walks, farmers holds, hanging from the bar, all of that's great. And then maybe finish up with some of these butterfly swimmers and you can have a good shoulder, uh, shoulder routine. But uh, if you are suffering from shoulder injury, man, definitely go see a specialist um, and, and talk to them and see what's going on. Because if you've got some hardware issues, um, some of this might help, but you may, you know, have something that really requires surgery. If you've been polling for the last 25 years and your shoulders are really giving you trouble, go see an orthopedic surgeon, go, go see what they say. Uh, and then, you know, maybe you can talk to them about some of these exercises and some of the ways that I was able to rehab my shoulder and let them give you their two cents. They probably are going to say, yeah, absolutely. You should definitely be trying to strengthen your shoulder and get more uh, range of motion out of it. But I don't know. Go see a specialist. I am not a special. I am not a specialist. I'm not an expert. I'm only an expert at my own shoulders and how it's worked for me. So that's exactly what I did to rehab my shoulder and to create perfect range of motion in my 50s after a lot of polling. So I think it I think it could probably work for somebody else, but I don't know. Definitely don't hesitate to go see uh, see an orthopedic. Okay, that's Physical Friday for today. How to pole a boat. We went through equipment, we went through exercises. We're going to get stronger. You're going to get better at polling. So don't get frustrated that you're that you're getting tired by midday. It's it's not uncommon actually. So you'll get in better shape. And the more you do it, the better you'll get. You can add these accessory movements to it and get better even faster. Okay, this episode was brought to you by Waypoint TV. It was also brought to you by Hook. Go to hookgear.com. You can use the code SE30 to get 30% off. You can go to Manscaped and use the code TRP to get 20% off and 20 and free shipping. 20% off and free shipping on Manscaped. You can also go visit our sponsor, Barracuda Tackle. Get the best cast net on the market and uh, help the guides as well. All right, that's Physical Friday for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Out. Out.